Parental discretion is advised. This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk with Michael Facade, remember our favorite Hall of Fame inductions, and oh my god, National Pro Wrestling Day. All that and more, stick around. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Chachi Plays for Kids. Find out how you can participate and donate. ChachiPlays.com Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 355. We're already having fun and we got more fun to be had. I'm back! I'm not throwing up! Yes! Yes! I'm Sorgatron here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the good old Steel City and home of Bruno Effin San Martino. Woo! We'll talk about that a little bit later. We also got an interview coming up with Michael Facade, who's up for voting on the Gut Tech TNA Gut Check Challenge and talks a little bit about zombies in Pittsburgh, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But let's go around. Oh, it feels good to be back, Chach. It feels so good to be back, and you're on the couch where you belong. Yes, I am. I am pulling my dick out at Sam's quenches everywhere, <laughs> and I am I am chasing them around. Apparently, in my bedroom, oh, wiggling yeah. my dick. And that's why uh, you wait, need to buy gold. Did you listen to the show from last week? Yes, I did. Then you are aware that I've canceled all further Mayhemy shows. Wait, what are we? Oh, really? <laughs> I, I've yeah. canceled the uh, Mayhemy awards. Okay. Uh, as the most winningest person in Mayhemy history okay uh i have i've done there's away with left. them there's nothing left there's nothing hey left. hey but no sorg's, sorg's got power sorg's the managing manager of generalness or whatever booker t said last night <laughs> what yeah uh, <laughs> wrestle were, fans coming from san antonio te- texas confusing the nation confusing the nation and Hello. sweden i i and yeah uh, uh, yeah, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm excited to be here. Uh, yeah, and be sure to listen to Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, where I tell you what to do if you're getting attacked by someone. <laughs> <laughs> With lots of hair. Also joining us. Yeah. She <laughs> 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 <You're> failed. <laughs> Sam Squinch. <laughs> also joining us from the negative zone is Papa Lunchbox. How are you doing, sir? What's up, hot dogs? I am absolutely fantastic, and uh, I'm excited to be here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I would like to take a moment, and uh, I know it's highly irregular to put the plugs at the beginning of the show, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. I uh, recently made an appearance on Comic Book Pit. Um, Those guys are absolutely fantastic. I want to give thanks to uh, Dan and Jared, um, who, uh, who are the two hosts over there. I'm on episode 114 called Marvel Guys, which is apt because we talked about almost exclusively uh, Marvel Comics. You can find them over at uh, CB Pit. That's P I double T dot blogspot dot com. Go and check them out. Uh, give them a good review on iTunes. And if you like comics, you will love this podcast. Excellent. And also, what this is, the Riz. Uh, Did you say something about Marvel? Mm. <laughs> I see. See, for the audio listeners, uh, Lego Marvel. He's got Lego, Lego Marvel's Marvel is coming out. He's reading a thing. But hey, instead of, uh, we're talking about wrestling now. Right? Yes, we are. Is it, this is the wrestling show? This wrestling is. Man show? This is. I know you've awesome. done the trifecta. And guess what? I've w- I watched too much wrestling this weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not the Way only one. Way too much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Way yeah. too much. National Pro Wrestling Day. National Pro Wrestling Day. Day. <laughs> 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 it we'll makes me sad because this is the last day we're ever going to do that. Oh, uh, <laughs> Until maybe, next year. Maybe, maybe. But we'll, we'll get into all that, of course. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. All the uh, past episodes and other articles and stuff are on there. Uh, you can also drop a line to... Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. If you want to drop me a line, drop us a line uh, on the voicemails. Also, oh, I forgot. Almost, uh, uh, check us out. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're on Spreaker, Brip TV, Brip 
Blip TV, Roku, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. So you can find us all a bunch of places. And you also buy the app, WMS Gold. Links and extras on the iOS App Store or Amazon App Store. You can check us out. Hey, appstore.com slash wrestling mayhem show gold. Try it. It works. There it is. Oh, my There's God. It flips. And it flips. This is the first time like I know this. It other... flips. Uh, iOS apps. It works Kinda. better than the WWE app did last night during Raw. <laughs> mm -hmm. That uh, is oh, verified. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to vote for something now. We don't have any voting on there. We don't, you you don't? can't vote on it. I don't think so. You mean I can't vote to send WrestleFan away? You can like star an episode if you liked it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Star the one that doesn't have Done. on it. Done. <laughs> there you go. Interactive. <laughs> and it has links to all the Twitters and other connections. And we're it on Facebook crash. and Blue, uh, Google Plus as well if you want to drop us a line on there. Um, my tweet was read on the $5 iPay-per-view. I am important, says Texas Anarchy. But we'll he touch was. on that in the indie minute later on. For, for In the meantime, let's start the show the only way we know how. That is, of course, with the fan mail. What's first? Uh, decisions. Um, do you want to start Spanish? Sure. Let's start Spanish. Let's 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 get cultured, motherfuckers. Hola, amigos. Es mi, es mi, es el gran azul. Dia lucha nacional. Dia lucha nacional. Si, sí, dia lucha nacional ha ido y venido. <laughs> y lo que un día increíble de acción de lucha que era. Mi luchador favorito de todos los tiempos, Latin Dragon. My, miles impresionado, wow, uh, con su actuación que representa CZW. ¿Por qué? Debido a los temores wrestling CZW, dot, 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 y CZW temores Kaiju Grand Battle. Ole! Ole. There. Just, I'm, you, you put so much energy into that. <laughs> uh, the Google Translated version of said email is, Hello, friends. It's me. It's me. It's El Gran Azul. National Pro Wrestling Day? National Pro Wrestling Day. Yes, National Pro Wrestling Day has come and gone, and what an amazing day of wrestling action it was. My favorite wrestler of all time, Latin Dragon, impressed thousands with his performance representing CZW. Why? Because wrestling fears CZW, and CZW fears Kaiju Big Battle. Ole! <laughs> All appropriate. Wait, mm -hmm. time out. If CZW fears Kaiju Big Battle, mm -hmm. then wrestling does not fear CZW. I See, that That depends if you ca classify Kaiju Big Battle as wrestling. Yeah, that's a whole I other discussion. I don't a... constitute, I don't believe that CZW is wrestling. Uh, and and you'd be on the same level as most people, Chachi. <laughs> there you go. Who here fears fears CZW? It depends. Am I in a match with somebody from CZW? <laughs> yeah, I I would fear mm -hmm. Zandig just for well, the fact yeah. that. Well, like, yeah. I mean, if, like, if you would if, probably if, rape me with like a light tube. But, what? <laughs> what? I would Don't probably not want to get in the ring with Zandig. Though. Probably rape me with a tight light tube. Okay. Huh. Um. So there's that. Um, yeah, I fear that. <laughs> uh, wrestling Mayhemers, 10 percenters. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, Wrestling Mayhem Tuesday, and that means Wrestling Mayhem shenanigans. And that's about all I've got this week because I'm still tired from National Pro Wrestling Day. <laughs> that said, Bruno San Martino being inducted into the Hall of Fame covers a multitude of bad booking decisions by WWE. You've done good, Triple H. Now hurry up and get Owen Hart in for the next year. Uh, Martha, shut up and take WWE's money. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was actually a good uh, article, which I think is going to be touched on here. No, no. We were sent from uh, uh, on the Facebook page uh, or the Facebook group uh, by our friend in the uh, in the uh, big media, uh, Matt Carlin's, I believe. Uh, the uh, do, 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 uh, the local news actually did talk with Bruno San Martino. Yeah, they showed it on WPXI this morning. Yeah, one on PXI as well. Yeah. Uh, about his uh, uh, addition in there, and it's really cool because he's saying like he was saying basically, you know, hey, I I wasn't there because of 
uh, uh, you know, the drugs and everything, and they really cleaned up, and it's and it's good to see. So uh, I, I think it's really cool, and it's really, you know, I, I'm really happy to see it. Very good. Yeah. So, there you go. Ahoy, WMS crew! Didn't see all of Raw, but I could, did catch the end. Very sad to see the Shield beat down my boy Brad Maddox. Why can't they get along? More important question, why did Cena and friends come out only after the beatdown was over? I want to say they're a bunch of jerks, but honestly, Brad did kind of screw them over at one point or another. Guess he had to get his comeuppance. <laughs> I hope this isn't the last we see of Brad. I've been entertained ever since his turn at Hell in a Cell. Do you guys agree? Do you want to see more of Brad Maddox, or have you had your fill? Have a fun show. Your friend in the mainstream media, Matt Carlins. I like Brad. I think it's fun. Yeah, I, I, and I, I like he's his, really growing on me. I like his instructional pads. Um, <laughs> I also like that he talked like Bane last night for some reason. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, keep Brad around. I, li I liked him all the way up until last night with that promo of his. Really? Because when he talked he enunciated at the wrong time dude, dude he's doing the, it on purpose at this at this point though you know oh maybe maybe he's doing it on purpose but it just was annoying when he did that and then went back down the <laughs> i heard it that, that means i'm preparing for our next email dj lunchbox i uh, believe this one belongs to you okay <laughs> are you gonna sound say it like that now <laughs> okay. Hey, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We just like hey, change hey, up hey, his, hey. his accent from time to time, right? <laughs> it's me, it's me, it's fan of the year, Big Pipsy. What it is? Mayhem Crew. Happy road to WrestleMania uh, to you and yours. So I watched SmackDown and Impact and Raw and such, and it looks like Aces and Eight's gimmick might just made it to a new law. Get it, Bischoff? Ugh, oh, damn. Shit, really? Really? I said Wes Briscoe was with them from the start, along with Gallows and Mike Knox. N O C K S. <laughs> uh, we will see if Chris Masters is involved too, but Garrick Bischoff needs to find a office job or anything else. Take flying leap or what the fuck ever. I understand that everyone starts somewhere, but so did Maven. Enough said. Fandango promo happened on Raw. Will Johnny Curtis dance into the hearts and minds of the WWE Universe? Time will tell. Random fact, I believe if you put Fandango in the Urban Dictionary that it means pussy or vagina or woman parts. So not only is Fandango a dance, it is a dancing vagina played by Johnny Curtis. Yikes! Damn! This guy over here! John Cena has some shit on his shit on Raw got the pimple that only comes from you know. Check it out on Raw HD Tron. Herpes. I don't know what that sentence means. He, he had herpes. <laughs> oh, herpes. Yeah. Mark Henry, somebody going to get their ass kicked. Somebody going to get their wig split. He kicked the shit out of Mysterio in Sin Cara. Mexicans got got. Mark Henry beat the Mexicans so bad that he said that he Mexican beat them down. He Mexican beat them both. <laughs> Oh. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I'm all for the Mark Henry faction. Not down, then you should be down with Brown, not get beat down. <laughs> These are verbatim. All right. <laughs> the Shield and Cena and Sheamus and Ryback deal was pretty lame. I would like to see Shield involved in matches sometime. Maybe Cena and Ryback in handicap match against Shield at Chamber Pay Per View or Brad Maddox could team with Cena and Ryback since he is the hero or Snitch, New Rock movie, who showed Vince uh, footage revealing Heyman and Shield and Maddox deal. Anyways, Cena is Royal Rumble, so let fucking book it, WWE. 
Brian and Kim seem to be maybe breaking up soon too. I believe they are both in SmackDown Chamber match for a number one contender. I like the team, but all good things must come to end. Funny stuff still so far in entertaining matches. Jericho is back, still very happy about this. Hooray! Why? To J. It seems like the tag division we are all so happy. We were all happy about this almost nothing again. Why, why, WWE, why is this so? Good news, Bruno Sammartino uh, enters Hoff after 30 years of BS. Happy to see. Well, enough. It's enough. It is time for this week's questions. Who is winning chamber matches this year? Yeah. Guess. Swagger or Barrett on SmackDown and if Raw Chamber eat is Jericho. So, with Eliminating Chamber approaching, who was your favorite Chamber winners or moments? I enjoyed when Goldberg was in with Jericho and Triple H and he cut himself on plexiglass by spearing through Chamber pods. I liked Edge cashing in on Cena at New Year's Revolution Chamber match for first Money in the Bank uh, cash in as well. Thanks to Team Chachi with the clean sweep. Thanks to Zorg, Wrestlefan, Riz, Bobby, Zero, Azul, Alex K, Bodigdi, and Chachi. As well as Fan of the Year, I get to tell anyone who doesn't like it to suck it. Peace, <laughs> bitches. Till next time, it's me. It's me. It's the Fan of the Fucking Year at Big PPC. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so... PPC, you can suck my dick. <laughs> All right, here, Thank here everybody from, on the show from me. Urban Dictionary, mm -hmm. uh, Fandango. When a male receives a hand job from a person wearing a brown paper bag on the hand, all of the famous TV commercials. I got a Fandango last night, and now I have five paper cuts. Um, <laughs> wait, hold on, hold on. A uh, female part, also known as vagina or fanny, used as slang for either of those. I have an itchy Fandango. Light way <laughs> to say the F word. Any group or collection of four or more whores, prostitutes, call girls, ladies of the night. Dude, you're getting tomor <laughs> married tomorrow. Let's go find some Fandangos. I, th I think we found the title of the show. And there Itchy Fandango. <laughs> <laughs> got five paper cuts. Wow. <laughs> five. Yeah, five paper title. cuts. All right. Um, so uh, Elimination Chamber. So it's interesting. So they're doing like a War Games one with the shield. I, the way it's looking, it looks yeah. like. I like it. I like that idea because I saw that. I was like, "Oh man, they'll do war games with it." It's it, it, like perfect with elimination chamber. So they have that seen going it so on. many. You've seen it so many times in the video games. Yeah. Why not? We had this. We we were saying, "Oh, this is this is cool. Why don't they have this?" Now we get to see what it actually looks like. Now we already have uh, Randy Orton and uh, Mysterio and Daniel Bryan <laughs> in the elimination chamber set up so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is there speculation? I thought Kane was in there too. Possibly, Kane. I heard something about a return, someone that returned from Marth, maybe yeah, yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be like Jack Swagger, <laughs> Kane, and I don't know Sheamus. Um, yeah, probably Sheamus. Either way, just not really, really not really too exciting. Clam jam. And actually, if you look at that, there's only one. Yeah, there's only one heel and all that. Like there needs to be somebody else in there. Maybe Mark Henry. Mark Henry would make sense. Yes. <laughs> at least sorry. sorry i just got a mark it's just too face that. heavy if we have like a cane and you know the guys i just mentioned you know um, who would have thought that we would ever be really excited for mark henry mark henry and jack swagger amazing. yeah Jack's we're, we're thrilled no, for both of them amazing. just because they got <laughs> shit on doesn't mean they're not amazing it's true well no, all back well, we, we loved mark henry's last run with the belt oh, so i think good. collectively I, is there anybody else that didn't like that because, I mean, that was like the perfect big man booking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, any, as far as winners go, I I don't know. I think it's too early. I think we need our participants to be able to, to do that question. I see somebody out of the blue winning it. I'm not yeah, going to say, yeah. you know, it's going to be one guy or another. Right back and CM Punk. Yeah, but I, al I also see... Yeah, well, Punk's wrestling the rock. <clears throat> yeah, but I see the winner of the chamber... Oh, wait, this is the number one contenders match. Shoot. Yeah, for WrestleMania. Oh. So okay. so it's basically so whoever wins show. between Sho and Del Rio against whoever wins this. I can see Orton. Yeah. Oh. 
Mm, what else? No. It depends. Oh. I could like see it. I could see him doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't you know, just Sin lost Cara. Bobby right now. It's still, it's still I'm, I'm sorry, Bobby. Anyways. I'm sorry. Sin Cara. Oh, Sheamus is going up against <laughs> the Shield. Sin Cara. Yeah, she- Sheamus and Ryback and John Cena are okay, all going okay. up against the Shield. You think Sin Cara? Sin Cara. Sin Cara is going to win it. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. If he's saying Sin Cara, I'm saying the Great Khali. Ugh. There you go. At I least, at least you. my pick can walk. <laughs> at least my pick was <laughs> barely. Baby. Chachi barely he can walk. All to right. be fair, Riz's pick is a former world champion. That's true, and, so. and it's a disgrace to the history. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because the world You're title has an amazing history, Chachi. Hey guys, on the line right now with us is a. Uh, 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 Pretty much a regular on this show. You're here every once in a while there. Uh, Michael Facade joining us once again at One Facade on Twitter. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Your boy the Neon Ninja is living the life right now. Hopefully, uh, you know, just hanging and banging. Excellent, excellent. Th- thank you for joining. First time on Skype. <laughs> yeah, Skype. Technology is wonderful. I got a new laptop over the holidays, and now I can beam myself facially to places. Awesome, awesome. Well, we wanted to have you on uh, here because I know you've uh, kind of uh, 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 we can't miss you on Facebook right now. Uh, big stuff going I'm on. I'm sorry. Let me just let me just <laughs> start off by saying I'm sorry, guys. If you know me, you know I do not like to spam the hell out of Facebook. I'm not the kind of person who says, "Oh, I'm taking a walk in the park." I am <laughs> tweeting about that. No, I'm not that kind of person. So I'm sorry about the Facebook and Twitter abuse that's going on right now. Uh, you know, it's not bad. You know, it, it's not like I, I'm just every time something posts and you have so much going on on it that I see it in my stream a whole bunch, um, and all of the wrestling people in my circles. So therefore, it's just flooding mine personally uh but uh but but if you're friends with him on facebook you're probably getting it too uh, of course uh, uh michael facade is up for the uh, uh what's the official name of this the gut check the tna gut check challenge the tna gut check challenge of course we're familiar with gut check uh they're going around doing camps all over the place and of course once a month they do the gut check challenge on impact wrestling and uh and 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 this has come come out the uh, actual gut check challenge where we can go and vote for you amongst other people uh that we've heard of and even friends of the show uh can you explain us a little bit like uh, you know what is this uh particular aspect of the gut check challenge uh, for this, the for the Gut Check Challenge, it um, is open to anyone that's done any of the Gut Check seminars they've had throughout the past uh, two years or so. And um, it's open to any of those people. And pretty much it's 16 brackets of open voting. Um, and it's going to go on from whoever the winner. There's picking the top three winners out of each bracket are going on into another round of the tournament. I'm not sure how much they're going to do in total. Say maybe like three or four, but um, they're going to keep narrowing it down until um, one lucky person will get a TNA gut check on air, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or maybe something crazier. Excellent, excellent. And uh, so, so you actually got went in and, and, and participated in one of their camps. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Um, yeah, the uh, the gut check uh, itself. I went not last summer, but uh, like uh, the summer before that, and um, it was in Troy, Ohio. Uh, it's interesting, um, little seminar. There's people of all different, um, you know, uh, experience levels. And, um, you know, we, we did little stretching, some drills, a little bit of mat wrestling. And then, uh, we went and we had ourselves a, a short little match. And, um, then we cut some promos and, you know, you're, uh, judged accordingly to everything. But, um, one little part that I had a little trouble with. Not necessarily trouble, but it really didn't showcase my abilities. Is in my match, I was actually a bad guy, so uh, you didn't really necessarily get the full effect of you know the normal facade that you most everybody knows today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did they did they just kind of throw out, "Hey, you're a bad guy" or something like that? It's just it was really like you, 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 you. It was pretty mm-hmm. much odd and even, it, it- like without even a, a question <laughs> or anything, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a little weird because I, I remember like when uh, what Shima Shima Zion was working with the Ring of Honor, like they did tapings, and one day he was a good guy, and then they try him as a bad guy like the next day at the next tapings and stuff like that. So it's I, I, I was guessing that was just kind of like a feeling out process for him or something at that point. Yeah, I wish I'd have had a 
uh, second match. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? The, you know, it, <laughs> it is what it is. And uh, I think I did well, you know, um, with the promo and everything. And, you know, everything all around, I think it, it, uh, I handled myself well. And that was just about the time, too, that um, Shima um, and they were doing the, the whole reintroduction of the X Division last, uh, you know, the, that that particular summer. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, you know, I'd like to think it, it I, I would get uh, an opportunity at some point to do what I can do. Um, that's a good guy. <laughs> Excellent. So th- this came up, and like we said, you've been kind of all over Facebook because it was, I, I say you're, you're kind of the one that's been the most industrious with this. Uh, you really kind of uh, threw out there on social media. There's a page up there on Facebook for, or a uh, Vote for Facade uh, for a TNA Gut Check Challenge uh, that you can join. You have over 580 people. It's actually an event, I guess, that's set up as on on Facebook. Uh, was was And I see it's not just you uh, that the event's by. Was this uh, your idea, or did somebody come to you and said, hey, you should really do it this way? Um, I really, uh, like, I, I'm really, a, I guess you could say kind of, knowledgeable when it comes to things i mean um i I just think of like this the simplest way it's it how can i spread the word to everybody everybody always has events or random things or you know or legitimate things but um how can i spread the word the fastest and what would be the easiest way to do so that's why i came up with the ideas i took those tiny urls everything they, they give you a random line of uh something for the url link so i'm like people aren't gonna remember that so that's why I came up, you know, with with uh, the links on there for the gut check challenge, for vote facade, for my gut check profile. Because you could go to there too. There's a uh, on the gut check website. There's um, actually uh, promo pictures and a highlight video, um, and it tells you a little bit of things that uh, the people, the participants have done. So you can, you know, make a semi-educated guess. Um, depending on, like I said, my stuff on there is a little dated. It's, it's been like two years, but I mean, the video on there is plenty crazy enough to see, to, you know, understand what I, I, I'm able to do. Mm-hmm. It actually does. Oh, maybe it's just me that the video is not loading. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely seems like if you, well, there's two issues I found with this uh, process so far. One, there's a bunch of names. Okay. The other problem I have, and, and I think you're addressing this partially with your Facebook uh, setup here and your tiny URLs and everything, is it's all by your real names. Like, there's a bunch of people on here I didn't realize were in here uh, because it is your, again, you're not there as Michael Facade. It's under your real name, Michael, and I don't even want to venture to do a pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, thankfully, uh, it's not about, like, literally my whole life, my last name has been messed up. <laughs> and I mean, even if you're friends with me on Facebook and you see what they have for me on the gut check challenge is not the same thing, but, um, <laughs> you know, you can get the gist of it, but Hey, I'm facade and that's how everybody knows me. And really, I mean, you can even see actually, uh, there's a, a tag in my room, but, um, yeah, I mean, silly little thing up there, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's no big deal to me. I mean, some people it might really uh, upset them to have their real name on blast like that. Yeah, Especially yeah. there's a lot of guys, uh, mass luchadors, people like that that you know mm-hmm. would not be too happy to have their name out there. But you know, it is what it so, is. Uh, this day and age, the internet, all that stuff's public knowledge. If somebody really yeah. wanted to find out, yeah. they would. So so you guys weren't even asked about your name going up like that. Um, I mean, whenever you first started with the, the gut check program. Um, they said that you would be put on a website and everything like that. Okay. And um, so, but when going into the gut check challenge, I don't think really uh, anybody even really thought that that would have been used in that in that way. Mm-hmm. And for those uh, like, like, I know some of the names that come up on there. Uh, I know Bobby Fish is on there, which is interesting because I know he signed with Ring of Honor. Um, uh, uh, Gregory Iron is on there under his real name, Sammy Callahan, and I think a few other ones. I, I, those are just the ones I found out about. It. And it's really Sterling on there. What's uh, who else is on there? Sterling. Sterling's on there, and he's mm. he's contracted under WWE. I think there's a couple other people contracted under WWE on this. Yeah. Thing. So they really just kind of threw out everybody that's 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 walked through their door uh, over the last couple of years. Yeah, essentially. I mean, uh, if you've done one of those seminars, I guess they just really um, published the database or whatever it was. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. So, uh, and of course, there's, there's a little bit of, I, I guess, controversy. Originally, this voting was supposed to go until, I think, March 2nd, wasn't it? 
Uh, Early March? March 11th. I March 11th. Uh, and now there's been some changes. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? So um, now the um, the bracketing has been the, uh, decided that the top three are going to be the ones to advance. And um, recently it's been announced that there's unlimited voting. So lots of things, uh, the landscape of the whole uh, tournament and competition has changed a little bit because, you know, some people that were in first place are fighting for that third spot now, but you know, it, 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 it's still what about a week left and there's a lot of things that can happen in this short period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like you're still kicking butt here, uh, in your bracket, uh, followed up by, uh, well, I don't even know who these people are. So, <laughs> well, yeah. they're real names, so who knows, you know? So, uh, uh, you know, the only one I recognize on here was like Bobby Fish because apparently that's his real name. Uh, yeah, presumably. So uh, <laughs> there's a few guys on there that are that are random. Uh, the one part I like to see that the one time whenever I fir whenever they first had it out, um, there's a part on there where you could click on the world map, and whenever I I seen the world map, it's it, it's coincidental that my color is green too. But um, <laughs> then I clicked on the world map, and then like everything was green. I'm like, wow, this is this is kind of crazy. See, I mean, I, I I fell off a little bit there, but uh, I used to have Canada, but. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> so you got uh, you have Russia, uh, you have China, <laughs> Australia. You have all the big countries. Oh, Saudi Arabia is locked down with seven votes. So uh, good job there. Uh, you're big in France. Uh, wow, this is Romania. <laughs> you uh, it's pretty crazy. You've oh. got some work to do in Africa. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been trying, man. Wait, wait. I think those are the countries that don't have internet, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. That um, makes sense. So, um, so hey, it looks like you're you're kicking off there. I guess a new the new voting ends what in mid February now, isn't it? Yeah, February 11th is going to be the last day, but then they're starting a new bracket um, mm -hmm. of voting, and I'm not sure if it's going to be completely online voting. Um, let's hope there's a little bit more involved with that, or else uh, I'll be. Uh, hey, everybody! I need <laughs> to vote. <laughs> and, and, but. Um, and I gotta say, with your Facebook, you've had some interesting fan art come up. Like, here's a, a <laughs> is you with Vegeta <laughs> facade yeah. vote count? It's over nine thousand. <laughs> I made that last night. You know what? I got that. Um, I got that at a thrift store for a dollar. That that, that uh, and armor. And I'm like, I, I can't pass that up. I'll give that to a kid if I find one that wants to wear a Saiyan armor. But <laughs> it, it just so happened that. I, I, See, I've tried to at least make if I'm gonna if I'm gonna bug you with stuff, I'm gonna try to at least make it worth your while. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Make it funny. You know, um, my the whole thing about me is like street art and propaganda, things like that. You know what I mean? Like the graffiti kind of kind of style. That's the whole thing. So that's why I'm like bombing different countries, bombing different countries. Um, <laughs> you know, with uh, all of my stuff, my information about all that stuff. You know, QR codes and stuff. Shout out to Chris Chandler too. He's been doing a great job making a lot of that art for me. Oh yeah. And um, but yeah, like uh, just trying to keep it fresh and you know. So if if there's a video or something that I'm asking you to vote, there's a reason for you to see it or a picture or something random. You know what I mean? Because like I said, who knows how long this is going to go on? I'm just hoping that uh, you know something happens that uh, you know it's not just online. It's not just an online voting thing. Basically, a popularity contest the whole time. I'm hoping that it escalates and, you know, some people get to be seen on TV to a big, exposed to a bigger audience so people can make a – there's there's a greater way to make a decision, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, it's really great to see the kind of the, the, the fan base. Of course, you've, you've worked, uh, you know, all over uh, at this point. It's really cool to see, you know, all those people kind of coming together uh, for something like this. So – um, excellent, excellent. Uh, now, now you're also involved in another interesting project that's been getting a little bit of buzz uh, for one reason or another here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, a little bit of a movie project, right? Yeah, um, it's actually a, a funny story. Like the movie Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies, I heard about it being done and being shot and everything. And uh, I was actually uh, down at a show down in Charleston, West Virginia, and uh, we were on the way back, down and back with a car full of people and then like we caught a mega bus to indianapolis like that morning i can't really divulge names but then from there i got a call asking if i could be in parkersburg that sunday morning or that sunday and i'm like okay what's it for and um i was told you know uh, something happened to somebody and we need somebody for this role in a movie. You're going to get killed by Matt Hardy or something like that. I'm like, 
okay. Unrealistic, but okay. Nope. <laughs> yeah, so uh, um, it turns out I end up going down there, and that isn't even actually what I was going to be doing. It turned out that I had like kind of a main role in the movie. And uh, <laughs> um, so there's like Matt Hardy and Rebby Sky, um, Shane Douglas, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, uh, Kurt Angle, Roddy Piper, and then me. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, those, those are all the main characters. So it's like, it's pretty, cr- pretty crazy. Um, and uh, luckily I got to be myself, you know, uh, crazy uh, ninja stuff. There's a zombie chest flexor. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> he looks happy to be there. <laughs> he not be unseen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, so luckily... Um, <laughs> You know, got to do some 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 sweet zombie fights. You know, like uh, Power, Power Ranger fighting putty style stuff. You know, doing some <laughs> running up the walls and you know, uh, and you know, I'm a zombie ninja too. So, where zombie ninjas fall out of trees, so <laughs> all kinds of silly stuff. Uh, try to really incorporate my character as much as I did into the character in the movie. You know, so like I said, you see all kinds of silly like. Uh, wall shakes and uh, there's even some stuff uh, it's even some stuff in the ring but uh, basically the story it's a little bit like uh, I can't even possibly relate it to anything but uh, Shane Douglas accidentally breaks a kid's neck with a brain buster and then something about an amulet and there's something about a curse and you know people start dying and Hilarity ensues. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds amazing. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, so Pro Wrestlers versus Zombies. Yeah, it's, it's been, uh, well, there was like a test shoot at one of the local shows here, I think about a year ago or so. So it's, it's nice to see that's finally kind of coming, coming uh, uh, to fruition here. Uh, so, um, so overall, pretty good experience then. Oh, it, it was, it, I mean, filming the movie was, was, was cool and all. Um, but like really, the time outside of uh, just spending the time there because um, we're talking I, – I was lucky enough to hang out in the dressing room um, with most of these guys. And, you know, they give me a lot of, of really, really helpful advice and a lot of things to take into consideration, things to use, you know, going on in the future in my career and everything mm-hmm. um, in and out of the ring. And uh, that alone um, was really – really the experience i felt like i've been through like a wrestling boot camp after that because you figure so it started on a friday and um you know i didn't i I never went back home and went to uh that that saturday in indianapolis to parkersburg sunday and we shot from 4 a.m to or 4 p.m to 4 a.m and then we did that day every day um friday i had a show for prime wrestling and I uh, wrestled Bobby Shields, and I actually got to apply a lot of the things that I had been learning throughout the week in this this boot camp, this you know crazy environment. Did you bite and, him? Uh, Did you bite him? Then went back Saturday and Sunday for uh, two days more of shooting, and left Monday morning. So, and throughout this whole time, I never even set foot in my house or came back to Pittsburgh. It was kind of kind of really a crazy experience. But I'm, I'm like I said, I'm really thankful that uh, I got to spend you know, the alone time and to learn the things that I did because, um, you know, shooting a movie, there's only so much on screen time you have. <clears throat> and the rest of the time is just downtime talking and, you know, setting up for the next shot. And so, you know, I'm lucky. I really got to utilize that time. I, 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 I gotta ask, did you, did you bite him? <laughs> uh, I didn't get to bite anyone, but, uh, <laughs> we actually, me and hacksaw, and Shane were uh, messing with Roddy Piper because he's deathly afraid of snakes. And um, <laughs> there was one scene that we were shooting that there was supposed to be a snake in, but um, you know there was a there was a, let's say there was a stand-in snake, and uh, we got Piper one or two times with a, a good fake snake. Nice. Nice, deathly awesome. afraid of snakes, man. Awesome, and of course, um, I wanted to touch on, of course, you know, you you you're involved uh, locally here with uh, IWC Wrestling and a bunch of other promotions. I just want to touch base. What's going on there? We know you've been kind of out a little bit with an injury and everything. Um, but when are we going to see you back? 
that's what I'd like to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I've been, well, Chuck Roberts put a jinx on me. He, oh, put, he? he said, hey, you're a little bit dinged up. He put me out for Clearfield. And then it so happened that I got really injured because there was more things to that. So now he's got me on the shelf. He got me benched. And he says that he wants me to provide some kind of doctor's excuse or doctor's saying that I'm medically able to wrestle. And uh, if you know me, I don't really have insurance right now, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait too long. But, uh, I mean, it, it sucks, man. I mean, IWC has been my home promotion, and, you know, I, I want to wrestle there, but I just I, – I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I'm, I'm good and ready to go. This ankle – this ankle's ready for flips, brother. Excellent. Excellent. And so anything else uh, uh, coming up you want to uh, uh, speak on? Anything else you want to put out there? I know you uh, kind of get a good, good bit of traveling into other promotions. Oh, man. This is like I'm, I'm losing my mind at this point. This this Friday coming up, um, we got uh, AIW Conspiracy Theory up there in Lakewood. Um, Saturday I'll be back in Indianapolis for Pro Wrestling Elite. Um Next week, I don't know what that is. Um, coming up March the 1st, March the 2nd, uh, you got BOW, and um, that's going to be at the North Union Fire Hall. And that's um, that's, a, that's another new one, too. This will be their second show. Um, what else? Possible uh, towards the end of the end of the month there in um, – March, you got March 27th. It's going to be me and Hurricane Helms and Mo- Mighty Molly, the nice. mean, yeah. green dream huh. team against nice. the anti heroes, Jason Gorey and Chance Prophet. Um, and then after that, we got WrestleMania weekend. You can catch me at Extreme Rising there all, all those days Thursday, they're in Philly, Friday and Saturday. I think they're in Staten Island there. And then uh, April 13th, I'll be at the. Uh, Super 8 tournament there in Delaware. So, yeah, crazy. Awesome. Well, uh, we, we, we have, uh, I can't remember if we had you, we asked you this when we had uh, you and Shulo both on a few months ago. Uh, so I want to put a twist on the question. Uh, I think it'll be appropriate considering what we've talked about here. Um, and, uh, well, we have another question from the chat room I'll get to, too. Uh, so if you were a zombie vegetable... <laughs> <laughs> zombie vegetable which zombie vegetable would you be <clears throat> sir Jason Gorey Jason Gorey <laughs> <laughs> wow, all right good answer all right good all right <laughs> all right I want to see anybody else have any questions before we let facade go there I know I got we, one. Do, we do have one from the chat room we do have one from the chat room go ahead wrestle fan uh, well, uh, uh, Bobby F. J. Town uh, asks, uh, who has been his uh, your favorite opponent so far in your career? Who, who has been my favorite opponent so far in my career? That's hard to say. It's it's a t- I hate to say Jason Gorey is one of my favorite opponents, but he is um, because I know deep beneath that dark and dreary facade. If there's a kid that really, really is not afraid of anything, just like I am, is afraid is not afraid to die in the ring, just like I am. And the only other person that I would say that, like I said, it's hard. It's between the two would be Sabu, because he, that man is not afraid to die in the ring either, <laughs> and he's not afraid to do whatever, whatever it is to to get the crowd to respond the way, way you want. And I guess both of them together. For the same reason. Excellent. Yeah, um, so, so I got one here. Die in the ring. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to get your idea of how you're going to win the the swing country of Sweden in this <laughs> in this gut check challenge. Because right now you're 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 losing to Mark Haas or House. I'm not sure who that uh, or that's it. But you're losing. Sweden to that guy. So, how would you want to? If, if there's any Swedes out there listening to this show, and there are, and and there are, there are. We've looked at the numbers. What would you like to say to, to them about voting? 
Ja. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and watch uh watch watch some crybaby to to learn some uh some some ways to swoon over the Swedes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, from the chat, uh, let's see. Uh, Bo, Bo, Bo Diggity wants to know what's your favorite kind of mint? <laughs> favorite what? kind of what? <laughs> favorite kind of mint? Mint. Uh, definitely a peppermint, but I'm more of a gum guy than a, pe- than a mint guy. All right. But peppermint <laughs> over spearmint or wintergreen. Back around the wrestling, wrestling revolution uh, out there <laughs> wants to know Super 8 tourney against who would you want to get to the finals? You know, um, another guy making a lot of noise right now is Papa Don, and uh, I'd like to see me and Papa Don in the finals. I know they got a lot of uh, a lot of crazy guys, uh, like that wild guy. He, he's doing a lot of crazy stuff, but uh, me and Papa Don, you know, I, I'd like to see mix it up. That's another one that um, that I, I'd be able to mix it up with at the Extreme Rising too. He's like I said, another guy making making some waves. Was that how you faced here in uh, Man- uh, Manaka? Or I think it's somebody else. What's that? Was that who you faced here at, at Extreme Rising at Manaka? Um, no, no, that was Bestia 666, uh, okay. son of Damien 666. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, so kind of, uh, he's been wrestling since he was six years old. He says we don't have to ask this, but I did ask this of Aiden Vale last year. What's your stance on gun control? Gun control? <laughs> I mean, everybody has, has to have guns, man. Zombies can come at any time. And, you know, melee weapons are only going to last so long. Mm. That's the same. There you go. I think that's a very appropriate question, way better than But all else. else fails related to zombies. I mean, it, it, it's a matter of life or death. People, I mean, mm. let's not get into uh, conspiracy theories here, but um, <laughs> zombies need protection. <laughs> awesome with that i think uh we'll, we'll let you go here i know uh uh, uh you got a lot of uh footwork to do to get sweden back there oh what you got there what, what, what is this tinyurl.com slash vote facade so you can do that too especially if you're swedish especially if you're <laughs> swedish at one facade on twitter he's on facebook anywhere else michael cockle with the q <laughs> <laughs> thank you michael facade join thank us here on the man <laughs> we'll see you next time thanks guys thanks facade for that and uh let's jump it to wrestle fan for more untelevised amateur falling down it's the indie minute we've got a lot hey! to talk about we we have a lot to talk about something in particular this week on the indie minute it's and it's not televised wrestling technically, but some of us watched it, you know, not inside of a building. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, because National Pro Wrestling Day was this weekend. National, National Pro, Pro Wrestling Pro Day. Day. National Pro Wrestling Day. Aha! It is. Aha! Um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I just want to, you know, take some time to maybe discuss it because I know some people on this show right now, you know, both watched it uh, live from Smart Mark Video or were there, like some people. Mm. Didn't invite anybody else to mm, come. Anybody, I didn't I have an option. Did it was you? working. I would, yeah, it was working. It was a work trip. Jeez. I can interview with Sorg's what job. Um, but yeah, National Pro Wrestling Day this weekend. I guess I'll just open it up to you guys. Uh, National you guys Pro think? Wrestling Day? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, 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 so what'd you think of it? I, I liked it. I, I thought it was it was it was really it was a really good uh, sort of first you know sort of tester. If they're going to do more of these, um, you know, every year, I think it'll be I think it'll be really interesting. There's you know, I think if they are going to do it another year, maybe change the format a bit to where you know it's not 24 matches in two shows on one day with no intermissions. Yeah, like that yeah. probably would you know maybe do like one show. Like that would have been you know. 
Either way, it, it was really, and, and being there in, in person, uh, of course, you know, I tried to stay by the table as much as possible, uh, you know, just in case. But yeah, there was no. We real... saw you on the on the uh, their hard camera. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up a picture here, but it, it's under a locked account, so I, I can't really do that. Yeah, apparently, I was on behind the hard cam the entire time, uh, the the upper hard cam, I guess. Um, at our table there but yeah it was definitely exhausting there in person you really felt like the last probably three or four matches the crowd was kind of winding down it, it, it you know thankfully for that IWC match they did pick up a little bit for it but of course you know it was just kind of a tough slot to be in that late in the day you know um mm -hmm. it, it was uh I, there's really nothing bad about it except there's just a lot of stuff you know mm. and, and it was great they gave you a bunch of stuff it was free to get in unfortunately it was ten dollars for parking um so uh with that i think it was, i thought it was a pretty good success really good crowd um um I, 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 if it was the venue, was the size that was the issue? I thought it was really good that they, they upped it to what they did. Uh, didn't seem terribly crowded. The bleachers were pretty full. Uh, everything like that. So, um, no, no, it was pretty decent. It was pretty decent on my end. And it was a lot of variety of wrestling. Great variety of and wrestling. And that, that's, what, that's what I liked about it. Like if, if you're into like ROH and only ROH, you're probably not going to like some of the stuff except for Ring of Honor stuff mm -hmm. and uh, that's in the first minute or first few minutes of the show but if you're into if and if you're like if you want to get into stuff like that you have stuff like shikara who has who had ants fighting mm -hmm. ice mm -hmm. cream ants fighting ice cream and then you have kaiju big battle who had dr cube and a, a gigantic american beetle <laughs> and then you had probably one of the one of the better matches of the night was that was the presented by uh, Wrestling is Respect with uh, Gulak and O'Rourke the mm -hmm. one where it was yeah. basically chain wrestling from the old old days and again, uh, before old before times. we were a thing before. <laughs> Like before, Be before like our the time, Bruno San Martino way days. before WrestleFan was the thing. Yeah, way yeah. way before WrestleFan was even a thought in anything, <laughs> which isn't that far. But to see those kind of things really show the the, <laughs> the respect that we that these guys had for their craft. Mm -hmm. it, it was a nice. It was a wonderful sampler platter of. Of all different styles of pro wrestling that are out there. And there are actually groups I want to look into, you know? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of groups we should, we, we, you know, as a podcast should pursue and be like, hey, you know, I want to learn more about you guys. You know, we always say, like, always, we talk about the same uh, groups on here, you know? We've been, we've been criticized for that in the past, but, you know, you can only do so much. But this really kind of opened your eyes to a bunch of different ones um, mm -hmm. that we're going to, we're going <clears> to, <throat> You know, you know. Hopefully, you have a chance to take a, look, a better look at Alex Cars is saying in the chat room. Um, you know, C oh, yes. CWF Mid Atlantic. She How the, awesome was that? She match? the kid is a is the goat. Um, that, that that was a match like, like I was you know sort of looking at the entire card and me sort of being me and the wrestling guy. I know nothing about CWF Mid Atlantic, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, this is the match that's gonna suck, right? And it was the best match like the entire like the entire day. Like it was, it was insane. And I think that's what's awesome is with the whole you know concept of National Pro Wrestling Day, is you get to see National tons of people that you've never seen before. Yeah, uh, you get to see tons of people that you've never seen before, and at first glance, you wouldn't you know give them like a thought. No, no. You know, you but, see what Chiva Kid looks like, and you're like, oh, this is gonna be dumb, you know. And I think it was. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. And, but it, but it was phenomenal, and you know that's you know. You can, it's the whole idea of the, you know you can't judge a book by its cover and you know uh, uh, the whole day it showcased that so exactly I, and, and go ahead now the, I only watched the a little bit of the first half and then the rest of the second half and the match that stole the second half was the evolve match if mm. how. And I'd never heard of either one of those two guys, but A.R. Fox and Shane Strickland are really good. Why? I think you've seen Shane Strickland. I did? He's, he was in IWC this past month, and I thought it was the month you were there, too. I might be Maybe mistaken. he was. I, I don't know. But, but still, they put on one of the better acrobatic spot fest type 
maneuvers, and it was still entertaining as fuck. Yeah, cool. exactly. And, and, and say it was a good sampling. And I also think it was great uh, because I did definitely see, definitely see uh, the promoters and wrestlers, uh, you know, that maybe didn't get to connect, really got a good opportunity. It really felt like um, wrestling fan-wise, I got to meet a lot of really cool people. Uh, you know, one guy showed me an old like WWWF program that he had um, and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, a lot of the wrestlers got to uh, kind of rub up bubbles with other wrestlers and promoters and things. And sort um, of network in that. Yeah, I saw a lot of networking go, going on. I'm, I'm very excited. I, I, I think... I think there's going to be a lot of interesting names popping up at a, you know, say a super indie or something, uh, because of connections like this. I, I, I feel like uh, uh, this was good not just for the fans to sample all this stuff. It was a good thing for all the promoters to get together, all the wrestlers to get together. Um, you know, I, it was just like you know, it was, it was you know, we talk with Facade about hey, you're going out wrong around to a lot of different things, connecting, talk with these guys, you know, getting tips and stuff. You know, the same thing is happening with something like this. Like you're running into a bunch of people. Like like there are some people that were they were there. They were like, I've never seen Chikara or I've never seen Kaju Big Battle, and they were like, okay, I get it now. You know, mm -hmm. or, or had a chance to talk to the promoter and say, "Oh, I get it now." You know, uh, me a, a big thing for me. I love talking to the Kaiju Big Battle guys. We're actually next to us, and I found out we're actually the creators, owners of it, and uh, to learn a little bit more about uh, that, you know, promotion. However, you want to classify that as wrestling, um, it was really, really cool because that's something I found like a while ago. You know, and to learn that it's been around for 18 years, and some of the history behind that I didn't realize um, was was really interesting uh so i want to i definitely want to kind of keep a, a, a closer eye on that now um so uh let's see we got some other notes here oh, oh <laughs> the national pro wrestling day match does not count for evolve win and loss standings which i tell i was always interested <laughs> in that because evolve is like a win loss they have stats you know mm. and they stick yeah I'm, I'm, and it's sort of more with dragon get usa since that's yeah. gabe Sapolsky's other thing, so I'm not yeah. sure. What... I also want to note, I really enjoyed another thing I really enjoyed was the Coco Cabana Mike Quackenbush match, and then yeah. the uh, speech afterwards by Cabana, who received the um, the Ambassador of Independent Wrestling Award. Well deserved, like, very appropriate. Very appropriate, and I, his speech was very, very, very awesome. I, I encourage anyone who didn't watch the iPay per view to listen to it because it's something you know a lot of people should listen to. And, and, and there's some questions popping up. Uh, Texas Anarchy, IWA Deep South, <laughs> IWA East Coast, IWA Mid South. Where were they? Um, uh, uh, where, wherever they have been, I don't know. <laughs> what? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Well, I, I, don't I really think I think there's definitely a flavor of this. I mean, this is you know to the promoter. These are people that were reached out to that they thought were appropriate. You know, there is a lot of similar things. Things you've seen uh, Shakara guys uh, involved in. The wrestling is art. The wrestling is fun stuff. You know, there actually is a lot of talent that was on this that was kind of spread across. I think there was somebody uh, accusing the uh, idea that, you know, they mostly just kind of took all the Chikara talent that happens to work for these other promotions and kind of split them across the show. Uh, so it was more yeah. Chikara based, which, you know, it was based in Philly. It's all that stuff around there. All those guys are spread across all those promotions. But so yeah, I, I guess you could say, I mean, you could say that with like the, you know, the Saturine, uh, yeah. Juan Francisco, Matt, but like, like Gulak and O'Rourke are not necessarily like Chikara guys. Yeah. You know, Gulak's wrestled for like CZW beyond, you know, stuff like that. Same with like Francis O'Rourke. Um, and I'm trying to think, like, or like the wrestling is hard match. So like none of those guys have wrestled for Chikara. No, no, and IWC is completely separate. Like we realized going in there, we're just like, yeah, nobody knows who the heck we are. Like all the jokes that came up on Twitter, it was like, it was like, uh, you know, IWC stands for you know internet wrestling yeah. community, right? It was like, well, we've been around longer than that, you know. It was like, yeah, that doesn't matter. They, they haven't really heard of you, you know. Even though like, there is a great following for international wrestling cartel, but it's been, but they don't know them in Philly because they have CZW Chikara this that and the other thing all yeah. these guys that are there i mean they, that was their home turf for like half of these promotions and iwc was not one of them well i mean no but, one but, knows but who, i think I, they made I, a great IWC, impression no one i'm pretty sure no one know about new york wrestling connection no no absolutely Fight. not and they're, they're they're one of the most impressive ones you know have mm -hmm. you heard of fighting spirit wrestling never never heard never of it. and again one of those and, matches that stuck out but, but, so but i have heard out. of the maximos which you know yeah mm -hmm. the maximos mm -hmm. are good and then we saw LMA, LMAFAO and uh, Young 
Eddie Kingston yeah. out in the ring. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I like, it, I like young Eddie. I like young Eddie Kingston was really good. I thought young Eddie Kingston was good. <laughs> The uh, the LMFAO guy, not so much. He doesn't. He, he just wanted a party. <laughs> he just wanted a party. That's all I want to do. You but you know. see the variety, and you know, there's you know, there's going to be especially there's going to be people you don't like. And I heard a lot of stuff from people that like I really didn't like this guy. Yeah, you know? and there was a lot of stuff like that. I mean, there was a there one match in particular that that had a lot of conversation amongst amongst my yep. crew. There was was the Resistance Pro. Uh, which is Billy Corrigan's <laughs> promotion. Now, to explain what happened, now there was there was a few intergender matches. Okay, uh, Saturday some really good wrestling is fun. Uh, there was one. Uh, the first one that kind of had some people off color was this tag match for what was it for? Wrestling is heart. Wrestling is heart. Wrestling is heart. heart. Uh, uh, where there was one girl on the team and she took a pretty good beating, I guess. But I, I thought it was, you know, I thought it worked. You know, I thought I thought that was fine. But then there was this match for Resistance Pro that was a mixed tag. Uh, you know, guy girl against guy girl, uh, including Darcy Dixon that wrestles here locally with Renegade mm-hmm. Wrestling Alliance and Thunder Kitty. Who looks like she's straight out of Fabulous Moolah's era. It was fantastic. Greatest um, game in the wrestling right now. Right. So so they had this match, and I and there's a pig on my camera. What the fuck is happening? He's a little piggy. We're being invaded so by the uh, anti-indie hey, hey, wrestling pig. Hey, pig, what do you think about National Pro Wrestling Day? <laughs> He's going to bite the camera. He's fighting the camera. I... Thunder Piggy. Ah. 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 All right. Well, anyways. So as we were saying, so. so as we were saying, so there's these guys, and they were like, I don't know, six something, right? They're they're and, and a little more jacked. Turns out one of them's Ego Fantastico without the mask. Didn't know that. Yep, Robert Anthony. Yeah, um, and one of them's in TNA, and one of them's in TNA apparently. Uh, <laughs> or almost. But they had this match, and I didn't know we you know we didn't know who the bad guys were. Who were we supposed to cheer for? They straight beat up the women you know i mean it wasn't like the other matches were like you know competitive da, 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 with the women that was fine i i was like oh this is kind of the kind of stuff that uh wrestle fans sees like in texas so i was like yeah let's putting, see, putting, let's... putting female wrestlers on an even playing field to where you know it's not that they're female wrestlers they're just wrestlers exactly exactly but but that works now now, now, now let me ask you when you have your intergender thing down there in texas are they mm-hmm. typically about the same size the guys and the girls like like you don't no, normally normally sometimes it's not uh like i've seen uh a wrestler down here in Texas by the name of Jacus Pliskin wrestled like Rachel Summerlin, and Jacus is like two eighty five. Okay, okay. You know, so I and, but it's still a competitive matchup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and this was like not, and and there was a couple. You know, that was one other, and good. this is this is something that that some old, some other people say. Well, the guy shouldn't be bumping for the girls, you know, or something like that. I and, and it did, and when it did happen, it did look awkward. Okay, so. There's that, and then the one guy lost, and then just completely laid out. Excuse me, laid out the uh, the, the one girl on his team. Um, like somebody said in the chat room earlier, is like, yeah, somebody should have called the cops on that one. Um, so I don't really get that one in general, and it hasn't. I, I didn't have a high opinion of versus the Resistance Pro from what I've seen online so far, and that definitely did not help in that situation. So, sorry, Billy Corgan. Sorry, Billy Corgan. Fix your wrestling. Um, Alex, any cars? I still can't get over Kaiju Big Battle. Too much good stuff. Um, exactly. I, I don't think anybody knew what to do with that or they were completely into it. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. it's. It, I mean, it, it was one of those, like, we were with somebody that had not experienced it. There are two of us saying, wait till you see this stuff. It's going to blow your mind. And yeah. uh, it, 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 minds were blown. Minds were blown. Um, it, it was this... Uh, People need to get over the intergender matches being wrong. See, I don't. Yeah, exactly. Like the ones, I agree. the other two examples on the on the card where I thought decent. These were just like women de- beating displays. No, like yeah. Sat- uh, if you want to look like good intergender wrestling, look at Saturine and Juan Francisco. Look that at the match. The high- Look at the Heidi Lovelace match. Yeah. Uh, I think there was another one on the card somewhere, I want to say. I'm not sure about that one. It, but, but the rest of this the pro. Christi- Christina Von Ari and. Well, no, that was, that, that was women on women, but but yeah. yeah, it was just poor booking. It, it was just I don't know what was the point they were trying to get across. 
Uh, <laughs> it was a showcase of what Billy Corgan thinks about women. <laughs> there yep. you go. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's how they roll over there. So I, I just, I just think we're, you know, for you know, this is your shot to kind of make an impression, so people can go check out your promotion. And congratulations, um, you got all the rednecks. Yeah, you got the redneck audience. Yeah, right. um, but other than that, no, I, but the, the good stuff. I mean, the, I thought it was pretty decent otherwise. No, and, and, and as long and that's the thing, you know, you're gonna see good indie wrestling, you're gonna see bad indie wrestling anywhere. And wow, that picture of Billy Corgan scared the shit out of me. That scared the shit out of me in the chat room. Um, but you, you know, you're gonna see good indie wrestling, you're gonna see bad indie wrestling, and. You know, but that's what, you know, the National Pro Wrestling Day was about. Yeah, yeah. You know? You gotta see and, it I, I was excited for the Resistance Pro match and didn't think highly of it afterwards, but I didn't know anything about the CWF Mid-Atlantic match and thought it was going to suck, and it was the best match the whole day. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's not saying the other matches were bad by any means. Um, so, it, you know, that's what National Pro Wrestling Day, I think, was all about. Out. The point, I think the whole point of the matter is, did you see someone new? Did you find someone that you liked that you didn't hear before? You know, that's what it's all about. And that was great. I thought it was great for all that. I think it accomplished the, it on all, all points. Riz? The main event, I, I, I have, I'm sorry to wrestle fan. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I apologize deeply, but you still have a man crush on ACH. Fine, whatever. But but um, still, that doesn't. So there were a lot of people in that building. And I want to point out. But, I want to point out. I talked with ACH, I, and he does know the Wrestle Fan as the Wrestle Fan. ACH well, yeah. is awesome. Okay, but like, still, I, the, I I just got annoyed when I I told you, hey, what did you think about it? And Riz goes, he's not bad. Like whatever. <laughs> I just wanted to say that to piss you off, Wrestle Fan. Yeah. But seriously, ACH is. Is too cold Scorpio, and that match, like, was like the essence of what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a. Mm -hmm. it, I, I didn't get a chance to watch that, but I hear amazing. You should. Things. You should. It was good. It stuff. should. You should, because they stepped out of the out of the arena <laughs> together. They 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 stepped. <laughs> they go and step. That, that, that's all. That's what indie wrestling is all about: F fulfilling dreams like ACH versus Two Cold Scorpio. So there you go. There you go. And that was the other thing. It had a good mix, also of legit names. I mean, legit as in bigger names. They had Tommy Dreamer, Two Cold Scorpio, The Hurricane was there in a match uh, yeah. involved with the the wrestling heroes versus villains. He teamed with a cowboy with a pink power glove. <laughs> yep, it's happened. That, uh, that was the thing that uh, happened. And, and, and of course, Colt Cabana. So, it was oh, a pink yeah. power glove. It was painted pink. And Bill fucking after. Yeah. I think, I think, Russell, I think, uh, Chachi's about to, like, lose his mind. Yeah, Chachi's not happy with this. Chachi's yeah, whatever, Chachi. At all. Shut the fuck up. Oh. <laughs> oh. First, all right, first, you've spent a good 15, 20 minutes talking about amateur falling down. But we've it's watched an entire day of amateur falling I down. I don't care. And it was amazing. And then, you ruin, uh, uh, a priceless piece of Nintendo equipment by making it pink? It got them over. For That's being, because they're for, dumb in Philly. For being a gay-looking cowboy, he got over in Philly with the pink spent, They're dumb in Philly. Minutes talking about a national holiday about pro wrestling, Chuck. Listen, just because you call something National Blah Blah Day doesn't mean it's actually National Blah Blah Day. Hey, may I bring up Winter Emus? That's a legitimate holiday. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, I have, I've had government officials. Yeah, you have had Chachi Plays Day. Officially proclaim it a, a national holiday for me. Or a city holiday. It's a city holiday. Fuck it. National. <laughs> it was national. <laughs> Fuck you. We're on the internet. You, We're worldwide, bitches. You can't just say that it's National Pro Wrestling Day and expect everyone to treat it like a holiday. I'm sorry. Well, I've Josh got a piece of Miss, paper that Josh says... Chachi's Miss Debbie Downer over here. i got a piece of paper that says it's Chachi Plays Day. <laughs> Anyways, I thought it was great. I think it can only get bigger <laughs> next year. They'll improve on the things that were drawbacks, and I don't think there were many. Um, yeah. I think Anarchy says in the chat room, my mom declared my birthday a national holiday. <laughs> Who said that? 
Texas Anarchy. There you go. Well, he's from Texas. I got a piece of paper, Chachi, and I wipe my ass with it. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Shit. So what else happened other than National Pro Wrestling Day there, Wrestle Fan? Well, the, besides that, since we did spend a lot of time talking about it, I'm just going to run through a couple of the events that are coming up this weekend right. uh, in the indie wrestling world. The first being that Shakara has their 2013 return coming up this weekend, uh, February the 9th in Reading, Pennsylvania, February the 10th in Easton, Pennsylvania, which includes February the 9th, the main event being no disqualification. Archibald Peck finally gets his hands on Mr. Touchdown, so that's going to be that's gonna be a really fun one. Like you, I said, if you want more information, you can go to Chicago. Carpro.com to get all your tickets for Reading Saturday and Easton PA uh, Sunday. So go check them out. Also, our good friends in the Cleveland, Ohio area at AIW, Absolute Intense Wrestling, has their Conspiracy Theory event coming up February 8th. A lot of people that were on National Pro Wrestling Day are going to be uh, at that event. Not just, you know, the AIW match, which was uh, Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, but, you know, a lot of guys that wrestle for other companies will be at uh, that event. Conspiracy Theory, February February 8th in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so go check out uh, AIWrestling.com and go get your tickets for that great event. And finally, in the Texas area, I'm going to event this Saturday, February 9th in San Antonio, Texas for NWA Branded Outlaw Wrestling holding their extreme anniversary, their one-year anniversary uh, of their company with the main event being Jack Dane defending their heavyweight championship against uh, former ECW and WWE star Tommy Dreamer in an Extreme Rules match. So that's going to be a fun one. Also, former WWE stars Charlie Haas, Funaki, Rob Conway will be there. So it should be a really fun time. Indeed. Uh, so check them out at facebook.com slash branded, branded outlaw entertainment uh, and, and go check them out. If you're in the San Antonio area, I hope to see you at that event. And that, my friends, is the Indie Minute for bum, this bum, week. Wrestle uh, fan, I am disappointed. Why? Why? Oh, shit! Fuck! Wrestle fan, I am disappointed in you for – how do you forget? I, I didn't watch it. Big you, you Donnie said- versus <laughs> – Cliff Compton. Five dollar wrestling was also five dollar wrestling. <laughs> Riz, tell us about five dollar wrestling. It was awesome. <laughs> that was a minute. Go. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And by that the, is your the, minute by the pay-per-view. There you go. Yep. Excellent. That's all you had that's all you had to say. Thank you guys for the any minute. Let's take a look what happened on the WrestleMania I'm Show Gold, and we'll be back with a remember when? Can you, can you put your pussy down, sir? Certainly picked the hell of a time. To... <laughs> <laughs> your pussy. Just believe it. Just your pussy. Believe it. Put, your pussy of... put your pussy away, sir. Your pussy. Bed? <laughs> you, you don't see that giant thing with all the hair and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the face? Are you talking about a girl? An amazing indie minute. That was so good that I brought up Spotify and started listening to Taylor Swift. She is a talented young lady. <laughs> and this is just the things I do. Walk up and put some hoes in this ultra crew. Yeah, yeah. This is just the shit I do. Spit my beer on a bitch and grab another brew. Yeah, yeah. This is the shit I've been into. See me in a whip is mine. Yo, I don't ride no rental. Yeah, yeah. This is just how it's done. Grinding and working hard but just having fun. Yeah. Then I'm back in the midst of the mayhem Quick, quick, this oh, shit, this shit sick, what I'm saying Not playing, not gaming, not delaying Go and cop my dick CD sales ain't paid for the watch That's on my wrist No shit, I've been hustling Been struggling Been doing what I do Just for the love of it I've been discussing it Y'all is disgusting this shit And I can't believe these dudes wanna run with it So come in front this shit So come confront this bitch I know that y'all do not wanna fuck with this Hey guys, this is a Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're back with your Remember When? <laughs> you look like you're having like a Buddy Holly movie. <laughs> what? I don't even know. Uh, you know I don't, I don't know like how long. Buddy, Harry, like... Buddy Holly 
wore his hair in the style of a pompadour. Oh. You should get it right. I'm sorry. Or is it something like the Buddy Holly video or something? I just, something ridiculous in email. I do. I, I, Chachi, I love that sweater vest. <laughs> Before we even started the show, I wanted to tell you that. I completely forgot. I'm a big fan of it as well. It, it's oh, actually man. surprisingly warm yeah. for being just a vest. Sorry. Go ahead. Remember when? <laughs> Remember when? I thought, you know, uh, you know, a big big deal we talked about a little bit in the first half here. Uh, Bruno San Martino finally joining the Hall of Fame elite. Uh, really great to see that. So I wanted to say, uh, uh, let's go back and think about what were our favorite uh, inductions. You know, what were the most heartfelt speeches? What were the ones that really stuck out in your mind? Uh, they've been doing this for a good while now. Uh, and, and there's got to be some of them there. Who's got one uh, already lined up here? Ooh, uh, ooh. I got one. Chach, uh, 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 you got one? Chach? Yeah. All right, Tosh, right off the bat. Owen Hart. Oh, wait. Aww. Repo Man. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> Brooklyn Brawler. Oh, man. No, he should go in, actually. Uh, no, um, I'm going to go with Edge. Edge? Yes. Yeah. Edge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you hate on me all you want. It's a newer one, I know. Uh, but uh, due to yeah. circumstances, I think it. It fits rather well. It was cool that they did it like right away, yeah. you know, and got like you, you know doing anything more. Thank you, you right? Because he really was, he really was good. So, LB, you got one? Yes. Uh, it was. Um, I don't remember what year it was, so I'm not going to start that way. Don't worry about uh, that. Brett, Brett, the hit man hearts because it was this weird um, is like never going to see Bret Hart on T on WWE TV, him and Vince fucking hate each other. And they released the book and all this shit. And, um, and then somehow they made up and they did with Brett, what they're doing with Bruno this year. They, they've signed, they signed him on for all these projects and interviews and, and historical stuff. And they buried the hatchet and they inducted him into the hall of fame. And it was great. And it made me happy because Bret Hart, I've always been a Bret Hart fan my whole life. So, Excellent, excellent. Who's next? Uh, I got one. Okay. Uh, this may seem kind of dumb, like, you know, sort of the way it's gone now or whatever, but uh, Ric Flair, uh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, being when I was a younger wrestling fan, uh, my dad's favorite wrestler was Ric Flair, and he sort of, like, taught me a lot about him and, like, sort of gave, <sighs> his stuff sort of... into the hall of fame like it uh it meant a lot and you know it it was very heartfelt and you know flair flares and it's been a very crucial part of the wrestling business you know no one can really deny that um yet and you know no one necessarily really retires and you know and you know he wasn't that really gone uh but you know i thought it was really you know a heartfelt moment and it meant a lot and uh it was it was a very it was a very great one and I'm talking about the first time he got in the Hall of Fame, not the second time because he was in a stable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by you, Riz. Riz? Oh, uh, Riz. Riz, we can't hear you. Bobby the Brain Heenan. Oh, yeah. yes. His, the, the fact that he, at his age, back then, in two, well, it was in 2004 when he was fighting uh, – didn't he have cancer back then as well? Yeah, I think he had been by it. but uh... it, He had been by it, and he had lost a lot of weight and all that. But he was the Bobby the Brain Heenan that, we, that, that was the manager. He mm -hmm. was that persona during that speech, and it kept in the character, and it kept in the him, and it kept in the way, the way he – lived and he was the best manager of all time i believe i i, I personally believe mm -hmm. and his his speech was pretty cool too <laughs> awesome sorg yes you. sorgelstein um like off the top of my head i i, I think uh so cold comes to mind um I, I can't remember much of the speech. I, I feel like he, he kind of almost teared up on that one. Uh, but I, I remember there was the beer, and he kind of passed the torch to John Cena on that one. Um, I thought it was a really nice moment. So, yeah, that comes to mind for me. So, oh my God, I, I, love, I love the Hall of Fame. I think it's a really great thing they do. Uh, uh, you know, 
we, we kind of uh, uh, get on WWE for being about nostalgia, but I think it's, you know, they have every right to be, you know? Uh, yeah. And I think this is a really nice thing they do every year. You know, I don't know how it's like, I don't even know if it's like really a profitable thing they do or anything like that. Uh, Cause I mean, it, it, even if it gets well, on you, they sell USA, tickets to it every year. They sell tickets. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know, uh, but uh, but either way, it's it's a really nice thing they do. Plus, on top of it, I kind of look at it as uh, WWE's company picnic. <laughs> <laughs> like it it, it's, it's nice WWE being like, "You made us a shit ton of money, and we mean a shit ton. Like, <laughs> we have it in a warehouse. The bank won't even take it all. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, here's here's a big ass ring, and uh, we're gonna put you in a uh, Hall of Fame that." doesn't it exist physically yeah, so you know. yeah welcome brother uh, it's like <laughs> it's like their remember when <laughs> it, it is, yeah, it is. Hey, it is. once a year we look back yeah. but um, san martino did all that wrestling revolution says the uh one for whom the hall of fame was created for andre the giant mm-hmm. there you go texas anarchy he says sunny and it's all been uphill since for her uh, with that let's go to mad mike's minute of mayhem <laughs> Greetings, ma'am, universe, fans, and friends across the land. It's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. I actually didn't get to see Raw last night. I wasn't able to listen to it at work because we had a dumbass meeting, and my dumbass DVR didn't record Raw last night, but I read the results, and um, seems like there wasn't much of anything going on, except that Mark Henry came back, which is fun, uh, don't exactly know where he's gonna picture in for Mania, but should be interesting to say the least, um, I heard Punk and Jericho had a great match, when I get home tomorrow I'm gonna watch it, that, I mean, Punk and Jericho, you can't ever miss with that, but they need to stop jobbing out Wade Barrett and Antonio Cesaro. They, they need to stop this. Like, those are two of the best things they have going on WWE TV right now, and they're dropping the ball. Like, Ryback doesn't need more wins over Cesaro. And Randy Orton doesn't need wins ever. Like, at all. He doesn't... He can lose once or twice to Wade Barrett, and he'll be totally fine. Uh, the Elimination Chamber match for the number one contendership I mean I guess that's interesting I think whoever wins that is probably just going to be fighting Dolph Ziggler so I hope oh I hope Chris Jericho's in it um but right now who who is it Ray Barrett and Wharton uh that's two people I don't want oh no Wade Bryan or which Bryan he's one half of the tag champs I mean this is just Leading to the break of the tag team champions to get Kane versus Brian at Mania. Which, I mean, I'd be fine with that, but. Uh, why do you have to break up Road Scholars at the same time when you're doing this? I mean, who gets the tag belts now? The primetime players? Rey Mysterio and Sankara? Um, but, uh. But TNA, actually. I have to say, wasn't too bad. I mean, it, it could have been better. They remembered Magnus' work for them, which was nice. Granted, they're in England, so they didn't have much of a choice. But um, the reveal that they did of Wade, um, Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff, while predictable, was done very well. And <laughs> it's kind of funny how like um, Wes Briscoe has kind of the whole a whole Superman thing in TNA. Like, when he has his hair pulled back, oh, he's Jolly Old Wes Briscoe. Da, 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 da. But when he pulls the rubber band out of his hair, he's like, oh my god, he's Evil Aces and Ace member with the long curly hair that we've seen for the entire time. Yeah, I mean, it was very well done. It was very well done. Um, and they actually have a tag team tables match this week, which I'm moder- moderately interested in, especially since it doesn't look like we're going to be getting any sort of Believers Devon main event feud on a pay per view. But if all things, I mean, if Bully is in charge of Ace and Eights, which, oh, please, for the love of God, I hope he is. 
Like, I hope he was just waiting to get Hulk Hogan's trust and to get a title shot and to win the belt. And then as soon as he wins the belt, he turns on TNA and it will be awesome. That would be amazing. That would be the greatest thing in the world. Probably won't happen. But it'd be fun. Uh, well, I hope you guys all enjoyed National Pro Wrestling Day. I didn't get to see it. I was, I was going to come down. Couldn't find anyone to go with. Didn't want to drive to Philly for four fucking hours by myself on Saturday, especially when I had to work the next day. But, uh, yeah, I heard it was amazing. I heard it was a full of really, really good stuff, and I can't wait to listen to the show tonight to find out more about it. But, uh, yeah, this has been The Minute. Peace, bitches. Thanks for that, Mad Mike, for that uh, delicious minute of mayhem. We're back, and uh, it's time for the roundtable portion of our show. And uh, I, uh, I, I had a thought... Uh, in regards to what's happening in WWE right now, based off something that Mike said, uh, they have been jobbing out Cesaro and uh, uh, Wade Barrett a lot. Um, and uh, it, it made me realize that for a long time they were doing things to make us happy, like uh, kind of fans, like uh, WMS fans, things like that. Like CM Punk was on top. These guys were winning titles, big tag division, a lot of things going on and now it seems like they flipped the switch and they're back to the business as usual stuff uh the rock's got the title he's gonna feud with cena ryback's on top no more tag division they're jobbing out you know these guys we enjoy what do you guys think yeah it definitely feels like it um it's like yeah we had this shot and you gotta also think like like they had that experimental stage but it feels like the experimental stage was kind of all last year they made their money off the rock regardless of what they did under the card of wrestlemania right uh Mm -hmm. or anything else the rock was going to make them money so they're like "Ah, let's see what cm punk does you know uh and see where that goes with that uh see what we we can build him up to what's up russell fan I, I think the key, like, the, the biggest problem with the whole thing is not necessarily just because it's Antonio Cesaro and Wade Barrett and we think they're good or better than, you know, say a Randy Orton or they're younger or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the key is they're, they're, they're champions. Antonio is the U.S. champion. Wade's the Intercontinental champion. Randy Orton doesn't need to be beating them on no. every Raw. Or, yeah. And the same for, like, Ryback. And this is why, this, you know, we had to stand for a while. Like, Cody Rhodes says, I'm going to make the Intercontinental title important again. Right? Exactly. This is the exact opposite of This is it why it was no, not important for the longest time. Because you wouldn't have Intercontinental feuds and matches. You just have all these matches where they lose and just have, like, Ryback. Randy Orton, Randy Orton is never going to be Intercontinental U.S. champion. Because that's down to I him. Like, so. that's lower yeah. than him. So why is he beating the champions? All the time. I blame the rose jacket. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, uh, anyways, uh, so we do have uh, from uh, uh, Bobby um, the, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, uh, the comments from the unwashed matches from Facebook. Uh, one of you guys want to read this? Uh, sure, I'll do it. Okay. Why not? Okay, so we have three here. Let's get into it. Finally, WWE is starting to look like back in the days. The only thing to complete everything is for Cena to go heel seriously! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. This was about Mark Henry coming back. <laughs> okay? Alright. <laughs> Poor, You're another one. Poor performance of Mark Henry came to demonstrate stupid, brutal, straight-against-warriors that that wasn't ready to comfort uh, a freak monster. Okay? All right. And finally, Goldberg is the best in the history of any wrestling, not just WWE. And this was about Bruno getting into the Hall of Fame. (laughs) Why not? Jeez. Yes, because when I think of Bruno San Martino, I compare him to Goldberg. <laughs> and this is why when you see a lot of criticism for like indie wrestling and stuff, this is the kind of people, you know. And, and I don't think it, I don't think it's indie wrestling. No, no, no. I I mean, well, I mean, just I, just from some comments I saw from the weekend. Um, I mean, this is okay. Every wrestling fan thinks they know everything there is about wrestling, right? Right? Uh, right? 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 Right, <clears throat> right. Um, okay. That's and this, 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 I think, is a demonstration of that. 
But I also think it's just, you know, I, I don't necessarily think it's the independent wrestling community, I guess no, you no, could no, say. No, 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 no. Well, I think the independent wrestling has a certain shade of that. because They every, sure have opinions. I would say that. People in the indie, wrestl- indie wrestling think. But their think, opinions aren't. Goldberg was so much better than Bruno San Martino. That's true. That's true. That's well, true. They're, they're, the people no, who are pe- comparing Goldberg to Bruno San Martino <laughs> haven't seen a Bruno San Martino match. That's true. That's true. That's probably like, it's probably some like, like. <laughs> 15 year old kid you know and the guy the person who's saying that this is going back to the old days of whatever the they probably weren't the even born guy. then they the sound that they were having was pr- the the thing that, that sounded like they were a fetus just like you wrestle fan <laughs> yeah <laughs> but a dumb one see this uh, is this is why i love i dearly love this segment because it, it's a it's a gentle reminder to us that this is who WWE is pandering to. These the are, people who are leaving these psychotic comments. <laughs> these are yes. the people that are buying the t-shirts. Uh, it, to go back a little bit before I was interrupted um, by loud noises. So, uh, so. Uh, Kevin Smith wrote it best in uh, <clears throat> Jan and Silent Bob Strike Back. In the scene where they're filming Good Will Hunting 2, uh, Ben Affleck explains to Matt Damon that first you do the money movie, then you do the artsy movie. And sometimes, just sometimes, you do the, hey, can you come be in my movie, I'm your friend movie. And WWE, for the past little bit, was stuck in the, hey, can you come be in my movie, you're my friend movie. Mm. Sometimes you do the gay serial killer movie. Well, <laughs> sometimes. I just want to throw I that out there. I, I can't wait for that era. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno San Martino will be the first person to withdraw himself from the WWE Hall of Fame because they do that era. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, fuck this. I'm out of there. Yeah, I don't think there's a more manly man than Bruno San Martino. <laughs> so <laughs> that guy, that guy avoided a war. Uh, we survived a war to get here. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, with that, uh, what else is going on? I'm sorry. Raw happened last Raw night. Raw happened last night, and it was glorious. No? It was okay. There's a WWE app that went down. We talked about an yeah. awesome cast. We don't need to get into that again. Yeah, can um, I tell you my theory about that? What? About how I, I didn't have this theory until Jerry Lawler revealed the results and how he noted the fact that you guys voted so much on the WWE app it caused a power outage with our voting system. Oh. I, I have a feeling that they literally made sure that – or either they they allowed it so that the people would overload it or they acted like it overloaded just so they could make a power outage joke because of the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel like they did that. <laughs> sure, I feel I'd like, like let's out. let's fuck up our entire system and screw all these fans that want to vote for this thing just so we can make a pop culture joke. No, I feel that like that was, was their mindset before the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, thing that was wasn't working well the, before the blackout. Uh, that was broken in the Slammy Awards. So that's, that's true. true. That's true. I would I would like to point out that uh, I'm sorry I'm moving my camera. Um, I'd like to point out that Raw did a three five rating last night, and that's incredible. Mm. That's very impressive. Like some of their best ratings during the Attitude Era was a four. So wow. that's not bad. And they've been hovering around the twos, right? Yeah, they have been doing not well. Yeah, it, well, it, I mean, it's not. I think the problem. They haven't been doing not. No, well. no, 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 no. I think I think the problem is not that they're doing not well, because not that well is a fan, that is still a fantastic benchmarks. rating as far as cable goes. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're doing good. They're making money hand them over fist. They're just not making as much money. Off of that, and yeah, our inflation, maybe rates are different, maybe it doesn't matter as much um, as they did in that era when it was hot. And that's our yeah. comparison point. So we're like, oh, they're not doing so good. They're doing two fives and stuff. It's like, well, no, actually, they're doing now more that's than what I'm saying. above they're doing average. Not so good in compared compared to their own their yeah. own benchmarks. Yeah. They're doing great compared to fucking TNA and Bellator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh fuck Bellator. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. Can I mention right. fuck can I seriously mention fuck Bellator? What's up with Especially Bellator? when TNA TNA is basically just 
a giant commercial for Bellator now. Oh. It's so fucked well, up. Well, is that, is that another Spike thing? Yeah. yeah that's, it, it's yeah. right Is there always going to be a show for whatever Spike's promoting? It's more MMA shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't mm. see you don't see much Raw promoting other programs anymore like they used to. So make sure you stay <laughs> tuned after Raw for an episode of Silk Stockings. Or <laughs> Lafayette, uh, I remember yeah. those days. Is that, is that a real show? Still, yes. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yes. in the nineties, and then you there was Lafemme Nikita. Um, La Femme Nikita. Yep, yep. Yes. Was, it was mainly just like criminal, or now it's just like burn notice or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. That was before they had their uh, USAs for characters and stuff, you know. So stay tuned for this show about people that are in suits. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you get something like that when there's like a brand new show, but that's about it. Or if like a big show guest stars or something like that. So, other than that, uh, or the Westminster have, Dog have... Show is on. Sorry, Raw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, is there anything else you want to touch on before we get out of here? Yes, I have a little bit of news. Okay. Uh, today is the 29th anniversary of the death of uh, El Santo, uh, oh. who is the like the biggest fucking wrestling star in the history of wrestling stars. He became a cultural figure in Mexico. He became a B movie, like ultra star. His name is just synonymous with, um, with bad movies and sci-fi and horror movies and stuff like that. He was huge in Japan, huge in America. And, uh, yeah, just 29, uh, 29 years ago today, he was 66 years old, died from a heart attack. A little bit of history there. Mm-hmm. So, second That's Lucha all. reference of the night. That's not good. What? <laughs> I guess it was the second Lucha reference of the night to call in the chat room. Lucha. Three. Mm. All mm-hmm. right, then. Uh, well, we, we kind of went along in the first half, uh, so I think it's time to wrap it up, guys. Uh, so tell me, what did you learn in wrestling this week? Uh, yes. Do you want me to start? Riz? Me? No, Riz I'll start this off. Sure. Uh, sure. Um, I, I, learned, <laughs> I learned from this weekend in wrestling that, one, a man w- can watch as much indie wrestling as possible and not know what the hell is going on and still have a great time. And, two, that if you don't – if they don't – if $5 wrestling doesn't like the song that you come out to – They'll make you do it again to a better song. What? <laughs> what? You heard me right. They will stop the show, make you go back in the in the in back where they came from, and come back out with your with a different theme song. And huh. just music. Hmm. Jimmy the Snake Roberts. That the, he has a snake. <laughs> and he and he came out to some remixed version of something that a that actually a follower of like a mutual follower of me and Cole Cabana and Marty DeRosa and all that stuff who 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 then tweeted and sent them a an audio clip made him go out as to that theme the entrance music just so they can bring him back into the back so they can come back out using Jim, Jake the Snake Roberts' music. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Wrestle fan? And he, oh. and he DDT'd 16 fans. <laughs> Six, oh, no, 16? Did you say 16 seriously. fans? 16 <laughs> fans. They all came into the ring and he DDT'd them all. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Wrestle fan. Wrestling. Uh, uh, you need to bring up that clip if they have it. Yeah, um, I learned from wrestling this week that Booker T is super drunk. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say again? Man, He's man, the man. managing manager of General. Oh wait, <laughs> um, but no, Booker T, you're drunk. Please go home. Also, <laughs> why are you ma- also home. also why are you making matches for a show that you have no jurisdiction? Yeah, they never over? explained it, did they? <laughs> Punk was like, "Why are you making this match? You don't even run this show." And Booker T goes, "Hey, shut up for a minute, Punk. I gotta make this match." <laughs> what? A That's amazing. Flawless argument. Now, Papa Lunchbox, what did you learn this week? Uh, I learned that just because you are the WWE champion. 
uh, doesn't mean you have to show up on the flagship show. Hmm. Huh. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that way you don't have to go to the hospital. Shachi, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that uh, when when fearing for your life, uh, yeah, just go ahead and whip your dick out. <laughs> Listen, I don't know about British. wrestling, but but that uh, has a lot to do with wrestling. It has a lot to do with wrestling, right? Dude, wrestling just just every directed. wrestler who gets in the ring with Ryback should use that knowledge. <laughs> just let me out. <laughs> um, from the chat room, uh, well, first Ben Mike says he learned that Wes Briscoe is the real Superman of TNA. Uh, Bobby learned that Randy Orton can't be stopped and it's just easier to shave my head and hear the voices in my head and just become an RK asshole just like the rest of America. Out of nowhere. Wow. <laughs> Bobby, uh, I learned that at Wrestling Revolution learned that Brad Maddox is a lot of balls to take on the shield and he would be a better Bischoff son than Garrett Bischoff. Uh, and Cars learned that uh, $5 Wrestling can have a better iPay-per-view stream than ROH. <laughs> it was kind of pretty It was. It was a good, pretty good yeah. stream. It was yeah, a all right. great stream. Um, and you know, I learned I learned about the glory of something uh, called Virtua Pro Wrestling Two this past weekend. Uh, oh yes. uh, somebody had uh, that I got to witness a bit because uh, they pulled right up like Masato, I think it was against uh, Stan Hansen, and you're seeing Big Van Vader there. It, Wait it, a minute, this is the same intro that. WCW had. I know, right? I like it's pretty this much is the same exact intro. It's definitely the same like setup as like all those WCW and later the WWE like No Mercies and stuff. It's definitely the same engine, right? Um, yeah. And I was just I was just fascinated by this uh, when 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 I saw somebody playing this over the weekend. So so there you go. And and it's uh, Japanese. So I, I don't know if N sixty did N sixty fours have to be modded for Japanese games? Do you know? I, I um, think there was a cart that went in the uh, memory expansion port. Yeah. So so either way, you dis, did, they got whatever it is to yeah. play a Japanese game so they could play this game. Mm -hmm. That's Shirtless. pretty damn dedicated. <laughs> and it makes sense uh, if you know who it was. Um, so with that, I think I just spotted Kamala. I Yeah, I think I just spotted Kamala in this thing. Um, so I kind of want to find this now. So I'm sure it's like probably super expensive if I looked it up. So with that, guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thanks a lot to our guest, Michael Fassad. Go for, vote for him on the TNA gut check and keep an eye out for that Wrestlers vs. Zombies to see what his involvement is going to be uh, when it comes out here down the line. Thank you to Chachi Riz, the Wrestle fan, Papa Lunchbox, everybody else in the chat room hopping all night. Check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blip TV, Roku, Yo YouTube, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> drop a line to... Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com at 412-206-WMS0 or buy the app at Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold on the Amazon App Store and iOS App Store. And uh, with that, uh, thank you everybody. Wrestling Mayhem Show out! Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, wait for the